The Autobiography of Madame Kion by Jean Kion, Volume 2, Chapter 8. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. My soul was in a state of entire resignation and very great content in the midst of such violent tempests those persons came to tell me a hundred extravagant stories against father lacombe the more they said to me to his disadvantage the more esteem i felt for him i answered them perhaps I may never see him again, but I shall ever be glad to do him justice. It is not he who hinders me from engaging at Gex. It is only because I know it to be none of my vocation. They ask me, who could know that better than the bishop? They further told me I was under a deception and my state was good for nothing this gave me no uneasiness having referred to god the care of requiring and of exacting what he requires and in what manner he demands it a soul in this state seeks nothing for itself but all for god some may say what then does this so it leaves itself to be conducted by god's providences and creatures outwardly its life seems quite common inwardly it is wholly resigned to the divine will the more everything appears adverse and even desperate the more calm it is in spite of the annoyance and pain of the senses and of the creatures which for some time after the new life raise some clouds and obstructions as i have already signified but when the soul is entirely passed into its original being all these things no more cause any separation or partition it finds no more of that impurity which came from self-seeking from a human manner of acting from an unguarded word from any warm emotion or eagerness which caused such a mist as it is then could neither prevent nor remedy having so often experienced its own efforts to be useless and even hurtful as they did nothing else but still more and more defile it there is in such case no other way or means of remedy but in waiting till the sun of righteousness dissipate those fogs the whole work of purification comes from god only afterward this conduct becomes natural then the soul can say with the royal prophet though a host should encamp against me my heart shall not fear though war should rise up against me in him will i confide for then though assaulted on every side it continues fixed as a rock having no will but for what god sees me to order be what it may high or low great or small sweet or bitter honor wealth life or any other object what can shake its peace it is true our nature is so crafty that it worms itself through everything 
the selfish side is like the basilisks it destroys trials are suited to the state of the soul whether conducted by lights gifts or ecstasies or by the entire destruction of self in the way of naked faith both these states are found in the apostle paul he tells us unless i should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations there was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of satan to buffet me he prayed thrice and it was said to him my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness he proved also another state when he thus expressed himself o wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from the body of this death to which he replies i thank god it is done through jesus christ our lord it is he who conquered death in us through his own life then there is no longer a sting in death or thorn in the flesh capable of paining or hurting any more at first indeed and for a pretty long time after the soul sees that nature wants to take some part with it in its trials then its vitality consists in withholding it without allowing it the least indulgence till it leaves everything to go on with god in purity as it comes from him till the soul be in this state it always solace by its own mixture the operation of god like those rivulets which contract the corruption of the place they pass through but flowing in a pure place they then remain in the purity of their source unless god through experience makes known his guidance to the soul he can never comprehend it oh if souls had courage enough to resign themselves to the work of purification without having any weak and foolish pity on themselves what a noble rabbit and happy progress would they make but few are willing to lose the earth if they advance some steps as soon as the sea is ruffled and they are dejected they cast anchor and often desist from the prosecution of the voyage such disorders doth selfish interest and self-love occasion it is a consequence not to look too much at one's own state not to lose courage not to afford any nourishment to self-love which is so deep-rooted that its empire is not easily demolished often the idea which a man falsely conceives of the greatness of his advancement in divine experience makes him want to be seen and known of men and to wish to see the very same perfection in others he conceives too low ideas of others and too high of his own state then it becomes a pain to him to converse with people too human whereas a soul truly mortified and resigned would rather converse with the worst by the order of providence than with the best of its own choice wanting only to see or to speak to any as providence directs knowing well that all beside far from helping only hurt it or at least prove 
very unfruitful to it. What then renders this soul so perfectly content? It neither knows nor wants to know anything but what God calls it to. Herein it enjoys divine content after a manner vast, immense, and independent of exterior events, more satisfied in its humiliation and in the opposition of all creatures by the order of providence than on the throne of its own choice. It is here that the apostolic life begins. But do all reach that state? Very few, indeed, as far as I can comprehend. There is a way of lights, gifts, and graces, a holy life in which the creature appears all admirable. As this life is more apparent, so it is more esteemed of such, at least, as have not the purest light. The souls which walk in the other path are often very little known for a length of time, as it was with Jesus Christ himself till the last years of his life. Oh, if I could express what I conceive of this state, but I can only stammer about it. End of chapter 8, volume 2